Hello, this is Deborah with Black Education TV, and I have more news out of Zimbabwe. First, I'd like to say thank you to the individual who sent this um, article to me. Um, this uh, unfamiliar person, I don't remember receiving anything, but thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I found the article very interesting, so I'm going to go ahead and get into it. It talks about the sanctions um, imposed by President Donald Trump are going to plunge Zimbabwe further into economic turmoil. Okay, as you all know, America uses bully tactics to get other nations to do what they want them to do. So I'm going to go ahead and read some of this article, and if I don't read all of it, I'll provide the link if I remember so that you can uh, finish it yourself. But anyway, it says, The decision by President Donald Trump to extend sanctions on President Emerson Emerson's administration, um, I'm going to try to attempt to pronounce his last name, but it says Emerson Managnogwa. Okay, don't know if I got that right, but anyway, on his administration came after Zimbabwe's new government failed to meet international obligations and spurned an offer for a willing partner, and the United States analysts have said. This means Zimbabwe must brace for further economic turmoil with the renewal of U.S. sanctions. Analysts warned the renewed sanctions will spread misery across Zimbabwe's economy, with reception expected to hit factories and roll back production, especially those that run in partnership with multinational companies barred from the market by U.S. sanctions. Blue-collar families also face the prospect of job losses, worsening inflation, accelerating the decline of the currency, and making imports scarcer and more difficult to acquire. Trump on Wednesday signed into law new sanctions against Zimbabwe and end to hopes for better ties with the Washington administration. Okay, and end to hopes for better ties with the Washington administration. See, okay, there's more to this. I'm going to read a little bit more, but you see, this current administration, number 45, and not just him, but um, previous administrations as well, bully tactics have been what they use to get what they want from other nations because they feel like they have the power to control or m manipulate or pull the plug on or crash other people's economies. This is why these other nations are starting to get very tired and starting to do business with each other. I hope that Zimbabwe has the wherewithal to go and deal with other nations as China, Russia, Iran, and many of these other nations have decided to do. But when you look at how America is operating, how they are dealing with these other nations, it's very sad and it's a very bullying way to do things. This is how they do. They bully you into doing what they want you to do. You see, now, Africa is so rich in resources. Everyone knows this. And this is why for centuries, Western nations have been over there plundering and taking and grabbing and stealing and dividing up the resources and the people for a very long time, you see. And it is still happening. To me, I, I feel that I wish there was a way for African countries to come together, unite and say, look, we're going to handle our own resources, we're going to do our own thing, and we're going to see after our own people first, and then look outside of our people and trade with you on a fair level, you see. But instead, you have all these other nations going into Africa, trying to prevent Africa from being independent by doing all these other things, setting up corporations, and, and just doing whatever they want for the most part. For the most part, they're doing whatever they want, it saddens me to see these other nations, including these Asian nations, just there, frolicking about, impregnating the women, doing their thing, taking the resources, while the people of the continent are still in poverty. Not all of them, but enough of them to where it is a very saddening thing to see. They go in, take the resources, and the people are still in poverty. You see, always taking advantage of the people 
of the continent of Africa. But yet you go in there and you use whatever tactics you can to topple someone's economy. It's sad when you see that it's going to cause devastating effects in Zimbabwe. Look at the other nations of Africa. Look at how he dealt with Gaddafi. How Libya was just destroyed. They put out all these lies. All of these lies about what was happening in Libya. And they say, look, we, we want to come and protect you, the people of Libya. We want to come and protect you. But what did they actually come and do? They actually came in and toppled, destroyed, killed. How do you protect someone by killing a good portion of their population? Oh, we're here to help. But then women, men, children, infants end up dead in the process of you helping. It almost sounds like we're in some type of mad scientist type world where lunatics have taken over. And they're saying to you, look, we want to help. We're here to bring peace. But nothing but death and destruction follows. Okay, I'm going to get back to this article. I kind of went off into left field somewhere because my mind, when I think about how these people operate and how everyone seems to pretend like they don't know what the hell is going on as they come into other nations and do what they do and then say to you, say to the public, to the general world, oh, we're just... We're just handling our business. We're just making sure that these people are treating their citizens right and you're not even treating your own right. Again, like I said, some type of mad scientist type experiment happening where crazy lunatics are running the world pretending that they are doing the right thing. Okay, back to the article. Back to the article. Okay. Where did I leave off? I'm just going to start up right back here. It says, analysts warned the renewed sanctions will spread misery across Zimbabwe's economy with a recession expected to hit factories and roll back production, especially for that run and those that are run in partnership with multinational companies barred from the U.S. market by sanctions. Blue-collar families also face the prospect of losing jobs, worsening inflation, accelerating the decline of the currency, and making imports scarcer and more difficult to acquire. Trump on Wednesday signed into law new sanctions against Zimbabwe and end the hopes for better ties with the Washington administration. Okay, I remember reading that part. Going on to the next part, it says the Zimbabwe Democracy and Economic Recovery Amendment Act of 2018, which amends the Zimbabwe Democracy and Economic Recovery Act of 2001, was introduced into Congress on March 22nd. Congress overwhelmingly approved the legislation, passing a measure that had outlined the steps the Southern African country must fulfill for U.S. imposed sanctions to be lifted, namely the holding of free and fair elections. But the apparent olive branch was taken away soon after the crackdown on protesters was infuriated while the votes were still being counted in front of many observers, including U.S. observers, with a policy of reproachment quickly replaced by hawkish calls in Washington for tougher sanctions on Herrera if no, ha if no half I'm sorry, if no halt to the crackdown was implemented. Trump signed the bill behind closed doors without the fanfare that has customarily accompanied his signing of executive orders. Now, one thing that I, I find interesting is you have U.S. observers there to make sure there are fair elections. I, I say to myself, who's here to make sure that the U.S. has fair elections? It's really bothersome to me that a country who's been so unfair, breaking treaties, doing all kinds of evil, even have placed themselves as the police of the world to go and, and make sure that other people, other countries are counting and being fair in their elections. Again, it sounds like some type of mad scientist type freak show thing going on where you have reprobates trying to tell other people how to do things right when they are not even doing things right their own selves. 
Unbelievable. This is unbelievable, family. Okay, I'm going to continue reading a little bit more. It says, Heather Nord, the U.S. Department spokesperson, United States Department spokesperson said in a telepress conference last Thursday that the Zimbabwe elections of July 30th were promising, very promising. We thought it was a historic chance to sort of move beyond the political and economic crisis of the past and toward a more democratic change and better dialogue in that country. People turned out massively in those elections. We put out a statement just after those ele elections complimenting them on those elections. However, the success of delivering an election day that was peaceful and open in to international observers was then marred by violence, which we've been seeing and have been heavily reported, at least to in the international press over the past about week and a half. We've seen a disproportionate use of deadly force against protesters by the security forces, forces, which is a great concern of ours. Oh, really? You all are really concerned, huh? They said they're concerned about violent use of deadly force. Use of deadly force against protesters. They said they're concerned about it. The U.S. is concerned about it, huh? Hmm. Are they concerned about the use of deadly force against people here in America? By their own law enforcement? See, this is what I'm talking about, family. I'm going to drop the link so you all can continue reading the rest of the story because it is quite long. I mean, it's quite long. Okay. And I'm just going to go ahead and finish out my commentary on this one because uh, we are dealing with reprobates, hypocrites, and there's so many things that you can say about this group of people who are just running the world into the ground. Oh my goodness, policing the world with a rod of iron, wickedness tied around their belts. But yet they say that they are the peacemakers, peace bringers. We're going to bring democracy. We're going to oversee this and oversee that, but not even handle in their own business in their own countries. It's like we are in some wild nightmare some wild nightmare to where you can't even get through to these people and show them that they are wrong, that they are not fair, that they are unjust. Nothing you can say or do. Really bothersome, family, really bothersome. But again, they use sanctions, like I said before. Sanctions are used to strong arm other nations into doing what you want them to do. Oh, we're going to take this away or take that away. But some of these other nations... Iran, China, Russia, and some other nations, they're saying, look, America, you can say whatever the hell you want to say. Do whatever the hell you want to do. We're going to do business with each other. We don't need your say-so. We don't need your input. We don't care about your U.S. dollar. We're going to trade with our own money now. Let me tell you all what that spells for us. Family, this is why we need to get ourselves together, mentally and spiritually, financially as best as we can. Because at the rate we are going in this world with all these other nations saying, bump you, America. At the rate we are going, the American dollar will crash, become almost worthless. And these other nations are going to trade with each other. There's going to be turmoil felt around the world, initially shock felt around the world. But again, eventually these other nations, they'll probably balance out. And rise out of the smoke a lot better than America. Because it's the U.S. dollar that everyone's trying to get rid of at this point. So we don't know exactly how bad it is. But I say we should brace ourselves. Look at reality. See that number 45 is making enemies globally. Even those who were allies. Those that were confederate with this man. He's making worldwide enemies. Even out of those who used to be friends, allies, comrades, he's just making enemies on every turn. His decisions will affect everyone. And while you have his supporters are going to continue to support him, even the nitwits in these black churches, all of the stuff this man is doing, I don't know whose rear they have their heads 
end, but something is happening that is just really weird to me. This, the, everything in the world environment right now feels very strange. We must admit that this stuff feels very strange. It's almost like we are, we're trapped inside of some weird movie. I wouldn't even call this the Twilight Zone. This is some type of sci-fi phenomenon we are going through when I see what's happening in this world. I mean, so many layers and layers and elements and it's just so much happening. Sorting through it all is not an easy thing to do. But it is what it is, family, and we must carry on, not move in fear, not operate in fear, but do the best that we can to make it through it all, family. That is what we must do. I'm going to scoot on off of this video now and mosey on to the next thing, but I want you all to know, keep your heads up. Get in the word, stay on your knees. Let's pray our way through this family so that we could understand how to navigate through all of this mess. And with that, I will say shalom.